you know, if, if somebody buys a Dell, they're probably not going to buy a Mac. Uh, if somebody buys a Mac, they're probably not going to buy a Dell. So it's a winner and a loser. I mean, come on. What the hell does he know? I bought both. Right, Teleodia champs, and welcome to the show. Welcome to the epic shootout between the MacBook Pro 16 versus the XPS 15. You want to know, I want to know. And things have changed. We will find out which one's better for content creation. Now, purely selfishly, more about video editing, because that's what I want to know. And for the first time since I can remember, the MacBook Pro has graphics, you know, comparable with the high-end PCs. We're talking, you know, over 2060 here, so that is quite amazing. I've already done a video comparing these two for gaming, and you won't believe how fast the 5600M is in this MacBook Pro. And that was the thing, right? What do I compare the MacBook Pro 16 to? The XPS 15, the XPS 17. Well, usually I would say the 15, and that's what my last video was on. And I did say in that video comparing the two, buy whatever's cheaper. But now you have the 5600M option in the MacBook Pro 16. I would more likely compare it to the XPS 17, because the 5600M is at least a 2060, if not more. So there's no hiding it now. It does have the better GPU option compared to the XPS 15. But does this mean anything? Well, let's find out. So let's get into Puget System benchmarks. And as you can see here on the left, the MacBook Pro, and on the right, the XPS 15. And if you just look at the score, you go, woof, XPS 15 for the win there. And I'm not making excuses for this MacBook Pro on the left. But I don't think it's even optimised. I think Apple just chucked it out and they've, yeah, all right, we'll do this driver for now and we'll optimise it later. Because its standard export score is actually slower than the 5500, the old GPU. So I don't know what's going on there. There's something not optimised or whatever. How can it be slower than the 9500 graphics? It just makes no sense. But anyway, let's have a look. GPU score, obviously the 5600 wins. Export score, XPS 15, yes, because of the update, right? We're using NVIDIA encoder now. We're using the NVENC. Latest update for Premiere, it's using the GPU. So, yes, that's good. I have no idea why the 5600 on the MacBook Pro on the left is so low with that export score. Because as I just said before, the 5500 is faster than that. Who knows? But the most important thing for me is playback. And the MacBook Pro is better here, and that's because of that GPU. Now, as you'll see in the benchmarks or, you know, export scores later, really, like, the 5500 graphics is more than enough. And the 5600 isn't a big upgrade at the moment for exporting and stuff like that. But where it really excels over the 5500 is for playing back content. It's a strange beast. It has, like, lower fan speeds but louder noise if the fans go on 100%. But if you actually edit in the timeline, like 6K content, HEVC, you won't hear the fans come on at all until you do some colour grading. Whereas the 5500 is blowing its guts out. It's, like, so loud. And that's where I noticed the difference, the playback, how much smoother it is, how quiet it is compared to the 5500, and even compared to the XPS 15, it's just smoother with playback and stuff like that. But as you can see, the XPS 15 is still a beast, and it's going to cost a lot less than MacBook Pro with the 5600 in it, and the export scores, look at it. Yeah, you can see it's a beast. Playback score is still good. 52 is quite amazing. And it's not that far behind like a 2070 Super I've actually reviewed. So it is a really good machine. But let's get into some other tests. Now, After Effects benchmark would crash, so I couldn't use that. And look, Photoshop and Lightroom, like an Ultrabook is good enough for that. So I don't think there's any reason to test those anymore. DPC latency with the XPS 15 is not an issue anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. There you can see the spec per view. Have a look, see what you think. Of course, the Radeon Pro is gonna win here. It's got professional drivers and the 5600 is more like a 2060. But let's have a look at this. This is 8K Red Raw to ProRes 442. XPS 15 is a good time. And yeah, I guess it's maybe using a bit of the NVENC encoder there, I don't know. But it's a really nice time there. You can see the MacBook Pro 16 with the 5600 or the 5500, which is just a normal MacBook Pro 16. In Premiere, it seems to be slow, but whack it into Final Cut and you get the fastest score here. One minute and one second. 
compared to the XPS 15, 1 minute and 16 seconds. But to be honest here, all of them are fast, except for the MacBook Pro in Premiere Pro with the 5500. That seems to be like double. Yeah, I don't know why. It's just not optimized because you can see in Final Cut, it's much faster. So I'm going to export my famous sample project to H.264 to H.264 YouTube preset. And as you'll see here, there's really not that much difference between the XPS 15 or the MacBook Pro with the 5600 in it. By the way, in Final Cut, it's basically the same speed, so I guess they're using the same metal API with this render out. And it's a little bit faster than, say, the MacBook Pro with the 5500 in it, but what, 3 minutes 8 versus 317? Are you going to notice the difference? Even 322 in the XPS 15, you know, it's a few seconds. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, that'll scale over a big project, but it's nothing for me to worry about. Here we're going to export 6K HEVC to 4K HEVC. And as you can see here, the Macs are faster. They're always faster with HEVC, by the way. In Final Cut, it's exactly the same speed, so they're using the same API there. And now we sort of like 20 seconds difference for, you know, like a one minute and a half render. So, yeah, that will scale over time, so the Macs will be faster with HEVC. They're always going to be faster with HEVC. Just that metal optimization is amazing. And there's Surface Book 3. Yeah, I, I don't know why that was so slow when you think that it's using GPU rendering. With HEVC, you can't use the NVENC, I don't think. So I think it just uses the GPU and not the NVENC encoder. So that is a 1660 Ti in that Surface Book. But yeah, all of them are pretty good here. And this is a real world project because it's my XPS 15 review. And this is like a head to head here. And this is where the big difference was, right? This is mixed environment. So I had ProRes, I had H.264, had H.265, I had 30 frames per second, I had 24 frames per second, I had 60 frames per second. So it's a whole ensemble of just a bunch of random crap. And it's like a 12 minute project, if I can remember. Something got that. And look at that Mac. 7 minutes 23. All right, the bars look a lot more dramatic than the actual difference is. But 7.23 versus 8.22, there's a bit of a difference there. 20 seconds faster than a 5,500. That's the thing, right? It's not the rendering speed with the 5,600 at the moment. It's supposed to be getting a big upgrade, so it's going to be more optimized in the future. But even as it stands now, it's a little bit faster, but that's not why you get the 5,600. The 5,600 is an expensive option, but is it worth it? Well, it's only worth it if you're going to be doing a lot of GPU effects, titles, if you're using like higher resolution stuff. So the playback's going to be better, all right? It's always going to be better with the 5,000. 600 it's going to be better than the xps 15 that's just how it is between the 5500 and the xps 15 get whatever's cheaper but yeah if you're going to spend the money and you're going to get that better gpu in the macbook pro 16 it's better so i want to compare this to the xps 17 and by the way they still don't have the 2060 for sale in australia of the xps 17 so i'm not going to buy that until they do so things have changed. I'm going to update my video of the XPS 15 versus MacBook Pro 16 because, yeah, it sort of puts it into another class because it does have a more powerful GPU now. But I do love the XPS 15. It's still a beast and the prices will come down and it's just going to be much better value than, say, the MacBook Pro eventually. We'll see what happens when the 17 comes in. Stay tuned for that. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.